Guys, here we are for another episode of the Retro Journeyman. I thought I would start this a little bit differently. I just thought I'd do a little intro, just show you this screen, and then we'll go into like a highlights package that I'm I'm going to complete as we go to just show you how the last few months have gone. And I don't want to spoil things like I did in the previous one by just showing you the schedule and showing you all the results, the scorers. So let me roll the highlights package now from this, from when we left off in the previous video to where we are now, 31st of January. Hit it. So we'll start from the highlights of September and that uh, sole game here against Inter Milan in the Champions League. You can see we took the lead there through Almiron. This is at the San Siro as well, by the way. We raced into a 2-0 lead again by Almiron, who was just scoring for fun at this moment in time. The game was pretty much wrapped up when Mata was unmarked and hit it for 3-0. Inter did amount to come back into the second half as uh, the uh, player there was left unmarked. I can't 100% see it because my record audio is... Uh, in the way. Then a little bit of a defensive mishap, a massive defensive mishap I should say, uh, where um, Inter did get another goal back to make it 3-2 but we sealed the deal through a car to make it 4-2 and a good win in Italy. Into October and we started really well by beating Newcastle by 5 goals to nil. And then we followed that with a 2-1 win against FC Bordeaux in the Champions League. And then there was the big one, a away trip to Chelsea in the Premier League and uh, bearing in mind both of these clubs were at the top of the table. We took the lead through Gabriel in the 21st minute. Doubled it in the 27th minute here. Sinan puts a lovely ball through to Bale. Bale to Juan Matu, turns, shoots to make it 2-0 after 28 minutes. And then you can pretty much say the game was pretty much dead and buried here in the uh, towards the end of the first half. Marinelli puts the ball through to Almiron, who slots it home for a 3-0 lead at half-time. Chelsea, bless them, could only manage a single goal in the second half, which we're about to watch. And it was our former man, Gago, who got the goal for them as we beat them 3-1 at Stamford Bridge. But sadly, our hopes of a quintuple at the end of the season were dashed after we went out of the Carabao Cup by three goals to nil at home to Tottenham. Start November and we managed another 5-0 win against Newcastle, but this time in the Champions League. We then followed that up with a 2-1 win at West Ham after not being very good, and then a steady 2-0 win at home to Charlton in the Premier League. But the highlight of November has to be the game in Juventus in Turin in the Champions League where we took the lead here. One matter squared it to Dogen. Could have been an own goal. But Dogen did get the final touch to make it 1-0. Another defensive mishap here led to Rafael van der Vaart for Juve. Getting the ball through our former man Bianchi to put it on a plate for Fletcher to make it 1-1. And then the ball is back with Manchester City as former Manchester United man Thiago Silva puts in Almeida. Who places it home beautifully for a 2-1 lead. And you could say we sealed the deal here in the second half. Alex puts the ball through, tries to get it through to Dogen. Dogen does get it, and he does make it 3-1. Juventus did manage another goal, though. Thankfully, only a consolation as Thiago puts the ball into Juvenio there. And it's placed home again by Fletcher to make it 3-2 to Man City. And a great win into December. And what a demolishing win on the opening day as we beat Everton by six goals to one. After a 1-1 draw at Aston Villa in the Premier League, we hosted Real Madrid in the Champions League where we were, up, where we were lucky to draw because t Rowe had a goal chalked off right at the end of the game, but we still managed to draw 1-1. One, one. Then back to the Premier League where we hosted Manchester United in one of the lunchtime kickoffs. Man United did take the lead through Cristiano Ronaldo on the penalty spot. But we got right back into the game where Johnson put the ball in and Sinan put a beautiful finish there to make it 1-1 in the 35th minute. Thankfully, there was only one more goal in the game and it did come from us. Sinan, it's a lovely ball through there to Dogen who made it 2-1. Well, my home game against Manchester United wasn't the only tough game in December as we went to Arsenal and thankfully got a 1-0 win. And again, we didn't look great. With this being almost up to date, I can actually show you the full fixture now, bearing in mind we've done January as well. But this is how things have gone in every other competition. You can see that, obviously, I showed you the highlight of the... Well, I didn't show you the highlights because who wants to see Spurs score goals? I don't, certainly. But yeah, literally, this is how the last few months have gone uh, with the uh, the games in December, November, October and September, of course. And yeah, um, I didn't show you some of the draws. I mean, obviously, home to uh, Werder Bremen, the draw against Tottenham in the Premier League. Obviously, I, show I told you about the game against Aston Villa and uh, yeah, the away draw against Fulham to end the year. So, so into January, after a 3-0 win at home to Norwich in the Premier League, we then hosted Dagenham and Redbridge in the FA Cup and we beat them by 10 goals to nil. Where Dogen scored three, Flinsky scored two, Marinelli scored two, Cassidy got in on the action as well. Absolutely crazy. I mean, I know Dag and Red are in the conference, but still, to score 10 goals, pretty good. Wow, I've just seen that. 49 shots on goal, 20 on target. Wow. 
But the highlighted game from January certainly has to be at the game against Liverpool, where Liverpool took the lead through Manchester City legend Sergio Aguero. I think Aguero might know it. But then it got even worse for us when we went 2-0 down. Aguero again getting the goal and thankfully again not choosing to celebrate. But with Man City and we came back through Pullman's here. Gets the ball to Marinelli who hits it home. It's deflected to make it 2-1. Then Man City again into the second half now. Uh, straight into the second half I should say. As Michael Johnson smacks it home for a 2-2 and we're right back in this. And straight from the kickoff, we got the ball back and Chorluca heads this in front. So we now lead by three goals to two. But Liverpool hit back straight away through Sergio Aguero getting his hat-trick, completing his hat-trick to make it 3-3. And here we go again. Chorluca gives the ball to Sinan who puts it over the top for Dogan who chests it down and hits it home for a 4-3 lead. And Liverpool hit back yet again. Gerrard out to Aguero, back to Gerrard. Gerrard again to Aguero and Aguero! Oh, I didn't think it would go in like that. So it's 4-4 on Aguero. You could basically say got that goal as well. And thankfully, we scored again to make it 5-4. And Gabriel hits a beautiful ball home. And that's how it ends. And now we are finally caught up. It feels like a lifetime for me. I mean, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys did, then I'm certainly going to do that for the next, well, for the rest of the set, for the rest of the series, if you'd like me to. Just a highlights package like that. I think that was pretty good, actually, watching that back. Uh, not bad at all. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the obviously we drew 2-2 two -two at Bristol Rovers. But other than that, everything's been going swimmingly. You can see not a single defeat in the Premier League yet. And we are top. Uh, we have been really dominant. 13 points clear. With 13 games left to go, I I think we're uh, I think we're going to do really well this year in terms of the Premier League. Obviously, I'd be if we lost it from here, I'd be quite disappointed. If I'm honest, Chelsea sort of uh, fell apart after that defeat against us, uh, which is really really good, of course, for us. That's really great because obviously the Premier League is definitely a competition we still need to win. So in a way. I'm, I'm a bit sad that we'll probably be leaving Man City at the end of the season because this is a team that we have built and we've done really well. The finances, I have to admit, are not looking great. Uh, we're down to £74 million. Pounds. Have I signed a player? Because I did have 98 No. Where's that money gone then? They gave me they gave me more money. They may, I mean, they may have taken money off me. It is possible. But... Hmm, that is a, that is a, uh, that is, that is confusing actually. So I am on deadline day at the minute and I've only bought in one player and that's Diego Rodriguez from Boca Juniors. He's not great, is he? But he comes in as a backup because I sold the other backup, this guy, to PSG for £7 million. So we made a small loss in him. I'm kind of happy he's gone. But, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I guess, I guess it's all right. Have a look at the scouting section. There's a lot of players, of course, who are was he getting on a bit. Obviously, Lionel Messi's now 29. And there's a lot of uh, awesome youth coming through here. Uh, but uh, I can't say I'm really interested at the minute in making any offers. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of the money. Obviously, deadline day is approaching. So I don't know if I'm going to be spending any money at all, in all fairness. if I, Even if I was to bid for Frond, I mean, is this a player we really need at this moment in time? I mean, if we have a look at our left winger, Juan Mata, he's wanted by... Um, He's wanted by Leon, but he's just been absolutely insane for us. 17 goals and 12 assists. Can't argue with that whatsoever. Alex, I mean, could say he's probably, he's asking to leave. He wants to play more. It's understandable because he's not really played a lot, isn't he? But, uh, but yeah, um, supporting teammate Figueroa. What's Figueroa want? He uh, He's left out the Champions League squad. I mean, you're young, mate. Yeah, so... That's probably why um, you've been left out. That's uh, Yeah, that's on me. That's on me, my bad. Yeah, it, pro it probably will be a good idea for me to leave at the end of the season because I don't like unhappy players. Almiron, um, he's uh, also unhappy about how I've treated Luis Gustavo because he was also left out. Yeah. I mean, Almiron's been incredible for us. 25 goals, 4 assists, a car, his strike partner, 20 goals and 5 assists. Both players are absolutely incredible. Uh, Benito as well. I mean, you could say he's probably been a bit lacklustre in comparison. Only three goals and seven assists. But, you know, there's always a contribution to be made from all of them. Literally, all of these players are so unhappy, aren't they? Oh, my God. They're really unhappy. Really, really unhappy. Oof. Figaro and Gustavo. I mean, I love you guys. But, uh, yeah, you're, you're just not cut out to be in the Champions League squad yet. There's too many players ahead of you. Ooh. 
Okay, yeah, so it's probably not a bad idea. I mean, if I get, like, a Real Madrid job, then I can probably take Almiron with me. And, to be honest, I'd probably like to, because Almiron's an incredible player. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I can't complain one bit on how this season's gone so far. Um, I think from this point, we're going to probably win the Premier League. And then, if we can win anything else as well, I'd probably call that a bonus. We're probably the best team in both competitions now. Uh, you know, the strike partnership we've got of Almiron and Akar is just absolutely insane. Between them, already 45 goals, and we're only at the end of January. I mean, Gabriel has done well there as well. 10 goals and 7 assists from 18 starts. Can't can't grumble at that. And even Flinsky, or Filinski, I should say, has been doing well. He's been playing in the games that he should be playing in. And yeah, can't complain one bit, like I said. But yeah, it's only been like a really small... A really short video in comparison, I guess, from uh, all the others. It's just basically coming in and showing you how everything's gone. But in a different format. I certainly hope you've enjoyed that. But yeah, Premier League looks really good. And yeah, uh, hopefully we win the FA Cup and Champions League again. That would be great. In terms of moving clubs, obviously, the ideally we go to... I mean, do I want to go to Real Madrid? Because I'd be breaking my rule again. Because I've already managed Real Madrid um, on YouTube before. So... Um, Probably not a good idea. Go to the job centre, there's literally nothing there. So if I was to uh, like go to Spain, it'd probably either need to be Valencia or Barcelona. But um, but yeah, because obviously that's... Um, see, they're third in the league at the minute. And I'm guessing Barcelona Real Madrid are up there as well. Yes, they are. Batista down in eighth. So that's a tad disappointing. Me being a... I'd probably call myself a Batiste fan, you know, now. Because of just the amount of incredible players that we brought through there. And so, and they've obviously sold them on for huge money. I mean, even this guy here, Vit, uh, Visky. He's a player that I brought in. I sold him to Newcastle for 16 million. I mean, we brought him in for... I mean, to be fair, we brought him in for 15.5. So they made a small profit on him. But, um, but yeah, I mean, fair enough. Enough. Eliminiano Diaz. I mean, this guy was incredible. And I, I honestly, I should have started using them earlier. I mean, they could have got a lot more money than that for him. You know, even when I first came to Man City, I was looking to bring him with me. But they just wanted so much for him. A lot more than that, certainly. Certainly. But it doesn't look like they're going to be signing the youth anymore. And obviously, they're slipping down the table a bit. And obviously, reputation and all that is never going to be great. But I've got deadline day here to do for Man City. I can't say that I'm going to be spending a lot of money, if any at all. But uh, the main thing as well is the team stats. 85 goals scored and only 23 conceded. And that is the best. And that is what that is the one thing I wanted to see from this team this year. The defence needed to be better. And I think it's just proof that it has been better. And I'm really pleased with how this season's going. We will win the Premier League this year. I'm quite confident in saying that. And then, yeah, if we can win the Champions League and or FA Cup as well, that would be cracking. And then we start looking for a new job. Be a bit sad to leave Man City, I must admit. But it is the aim of the save, Retro Journeyman. You move and you conquer and, yeah, you uh, you just get on with it, which is what we're going to do. But, yeah, certainly hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you happen to be new as well. And I will see you again next time. Thanks again for watching.